All right, ready to dive deep into the world of wood. But, you know, not just looking at the surface. We're going deeper. Uh, we're talking wood seasoning today. You know, that step that's so important, but maybe doesn't always get the attention it deserves. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how something as like basic as drawing wood can totally make or break a project. Totally. And that's what we're going to uncover, why it matters so much. We've got a ton of info here from the science behind why wood even needs to dry out to the different ways to do it. We'll even get into how to avoid those nightmare scenarios everyone's worried about, like warped doors, wobbly tables, all that fun stuff. Oh, yeah, because trust me, the amount of havoc a little bit of moisture can cause in wood, it's kind of unbelievable. No more taking wood for granted after this, right? Okay, so first things first. Why does wood even need seasoning? I mean, we see those big stacks of lumber at the store all ready to go. What's the big deal? So here's the thing. Fresh cut wood, what we call green wood, has a surprising amount of water in it. Surprising how, like, give me a ballpark. Depending on the type of wood, you could be talking 50% water, sometimes even more. And if you try using wood like that without drying it properly, you're just asking for trouble. Okay, so asking for trouble. What kind of trouble are we talking here? I know our research mentioned warping, cracking, mm -hmm. but what does that actually look like in real life? Paint me a picture. Okay, imagine you spend like hours building this beautiful oak dining table, right? You've sanded it down, got the perfect finish, everything. Then a few months later, you notice the tabletop. It's not flat anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, it's starting to cup. The edges are curling upwards. Ugh, that's heartbreaking. All that work just warped. And it's not just about how it looks either. Using wood that hasn't been seasoned right can actually mess with how strong it is. Table, door, even a beam in your house, it's all compromised. This is it like building a house on sand? Looks fine at first, but then disaster. Exactly. And you know what else? This is important. Our source has mentioned energy efficiency. All those tiny gaps, those cracks that happen in wood that isn't seasoned right, they're mm. like little escape routes for heat in the winter, cool air in the summer. So not only are you dealing with warped furniture, mm -hmm. potential disasters waiting to happen, but your energy bills are going through the roof too. That's rough. Yeah, it's a triple whammy. But the good news is seasoning your wood the right way can prevent all of that. Okay, that is good news. So how do we do it? Give me the rundown. All right, so we're ready to get down to the nitty gritty. How do we actually season wood the right way? I know from our research that there are two main methods, air drying and kiln drying. Are they as straightforward as they sound? Pretty much. Air drying is like the old school way it's been around forever. Picture this. Stacks of lumber all laid out carefully in a shed with good airflow, totally exposed to the elements. It's a slow process, but it lets the wood release moisture naturally. Like slow cooking a brisket takes time. But some say it gets you the best flavor, or in this case, the best results. But our sources did say air drying can take a long time. Right. Like months, even years for some types of wood. Yeah, that's where kiln drying comes in. It's the faster, more modern approach. Kiln drying sounds kind of intense. What's that process like? So basically, you take the lumber, stack it in these big ovens called kilns, and then you carefully control the temperature and humidity inside. It's like giving the wood a sauna treatment to draw the moisture out m much quicker. So like air drying your clothes versus tossing them in the dryer. One's a waiting game, the other gets it done fast. Exactly. And you know, just like you wouldn't throw delicate fabrics in the dryer, some woodworkers prefer air drying for certain projects or specific types of wood. Our research mentioned that hardwoods are especially picky when it comes to moisture. Is there a reason for that? Definitely. Hardwoods, think oak, maple, they have this more complex cell structure than softwoods. Imagine a sponge versus a really dense piece of wood. The sponge, with all those holes, it dries out way faster and more evenly, right? Hardwoods are like that dense wood. They need to be dried out slowly and carefully so they don't warp or crack. So choosing the right drying method, it all depends. Type of wood, how much time you have, and what you want the final product to be like. Makes sense. It does. And it shows you how important it is to really understand your materials. I mean, even before you pick up a saw, knowing about the wood and how it behaves can save you a lot of trouble later on. For sure. Our sources talked a lot about moisture content. Sounds like that's key to all of this. What does it mean and why is it such a big deal? So moisture content is basically the amount of water inside a piece of wood. It's measured as a percentage of the wood's weight when it's completely dry. And here's why it's so important. Wood is hygroscopic which is a fancy way of saying it absorbs and releases moisture from the air around it. So even after the wood is dried, it's still kind of breathing, trying to match the humidity around it. Exactly. But that's why 
using wood with the right moisture content for where it's gonna live is super important. Let's say you build a table with wood that's too moist for your climate. It's gonna keep drying out, which could mean warping and cracking down the line. Ah, okay. That makes sense why they keep all that lumber at the store inside, away from the elements. They're trying to keep that moisture content stable. Exactly. And that's where those little moisture meters come in handy. You can use those to check the moisture content of a piece of wood and make sure it's just right for what you're doing. So it's not just about picking the right piece of wood. It's also about making sure it's adjusted to the environment it's going to be in. It's all about balance. Absolutely. It's about understanding that wood is a natural material that changes, and we have to work with it not against it. And that's where knowing your stuff really pays off. Totally. Speaking of knowing our stuff, we've talked about drying the wood, but there's another important step, making it last. Wood preservation. Right, all that hard work, we want to keep it looking good. Let's talk about that. Okay, so we've got our wood dried to the perfect moisture content ready to go, but how do we make it last? How do we protect all that hard work? That's where wood preservation comes in. It's like, uh, think of it as giving your wood a shield, protecting it from, you know, the weather, those pesky insects, and just the wear and tear over time. Yeah, makes sense. Our research mentioned that treating wood can make it last way longer than untreated wood. Like, what's the magic behind that? Well, there are a few different ways to do it. One common method is using chemical treatments. These actually soak into the wood fibers, you know, and they act like little bodyguards fighting off anything that tries to attack the wood, like insects, fungi, all that stuff that can cause rot and decay. So it's like giving the wood its own immune system, huh? Exactly. And then there are more natural approaches too, like using certain types of wood that are naturally resistant to those things, like cedar or redwood, for example. They have natural oils and compounds that make them kind of like superheroes against rot and insects. Oh, wow. So nature has its own built-in preservation techniques. Cool. I also saw something about using design techniques for preservation. What's that all about? Oh, yeah. That's all about being strategic. You yeah. know, it's about how we use wood when we build things. For example, if you make sure there's good airflow and drainage around wooden structures, it helps prevent moisture buildup, which is a huge culprit when it comes to rot. So it's not just about the wood itself. It's about how we incorporate it into the bigger picture. Exactly. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to a really important point about wood preservation, especially when we're talking about those chemical treatments. They work great, but there's a safety aspect we need to remember. Oh, yeah. Our sources were very clear about this. Don't burn treated wood. Definitely not. When you burn treated wood, all those chemicals in there, they get released into the air. And those fumes, really bad news. <sighs> Toxic, even. It's easy to forget that even though wood seems so natural, there are still things we need to be careful about. Absolutely. And when it's time to get rid of treated wood, don't just toss it in the fireplace or the trash. Check with your local waste management folks. They'll tell you how to dispose of it safely. Right. Safety first. Well, I got to say, this deep dive into the world of wood seasoning has been amazing. Never thought I'd be so fascinated by something I usually just you know, see at the hardware store. Right. It's amazing what you discover when you start digging deeper into these things. From the whole moisture content thing and all the science behind drying wood to learning about all the different preservation methods, it's clear that working with wood is a real art, isn't it? It really is. And the best part is all that knowledge means we can build things that are not only beautiful, but they last longer and are better for the environment too. So the next time you see a beautifully crafted piece of furniture or a house with those gorgeous exposed beams, you'll know there's a whole lot more to it than meets the eye. It all started with understanding the amazing world of wood seasoning. It just goes to show you, sometimes the most impressive things come from the simplest beginnings. And with that, we'll wrap up our deep dive into the fascinating world of wood seasoning. We hope you enjoyed the journey as much as we did.